Imagine someone who hates you with the utmost intensity. Grabbing a handful of your hair while you're lying prostrate and helpless. <laughs> and scraping a dull blade of a rusty knife around your scalp with a saw-like motion. And let your imagination grasp, if you can, Mr. Graham, the effect of a strong, quick jerk oh. on the turf of your hair to release any clinging particles would have on your nervous system. Lewis Wetzel often went into the wilderness for long solo hunting excursions. For days, he continued on with this, but not an Indian was discovered. At last, the greenish gloom of the forest began to change to a somber yellow. The air became damp and chilly. It was the approach of night. In a sheltered ravine, Wetzel selected a spot behind some fallen trees and dug a small hole. In the bottom of this, he built a little fire, covering it loosely with leaves and earth. He was cold. Seating himself on the ground and encircling the hole with his legs, he covered himself with his blanket. This arrangement would not discover him to any wandering savages, and yet was, said he, as warm as the storeroom. When thoroughly warm, he took out some dried venison and parched corn and ate his supper. A drink from a neighboring spring quenched his thirst. Spreading some branches on the ground, he lay down close behind the sheltering log, and amid the twitter and bickerings of the innumerable birds, the hum of the insects, and howls of the invisible animals, he quickly fell asleep. Continuing on the unbeaten trail, on the afternoon of the next day, Wetzel suddenly came across an empty camp. Two blankets and a kettle taught him that its occupants were two Indians who would return from their hunt at night. He was patient. He concealed himself nearby. At nightfall, the two redskins came in. They cooked a savory supper. The odor from the roasting venison was so wafting to the hungry Wetzel he intended to wait till they slept, but these two citizens of the forest were high in humor. Hour after hour, they laughed and joked in their unintelligible jargon and making the forest ring with their merriment. At last, one seized a flaming brand and started into the forest. Through the black darkness moved with silent tread this figure strange, on which fell the ruddy light from the glowing ember. Was it some deed of vengeance? or some act of worship which impelled the torchbearer on into the night. The red colt danced in and out among the trees, growing fainter and fainter. At last it disappeared from view altogether. Wetzel turned. The calm regular snore of the remaining savage told plainly of his slumber. It was but one moment's work for the wakeful foe to steal forward, and with one knife stroke, plunged the Indian into a deep sleep which they knew no waking, seized the scalps, and quickly commenced the homeward trip. In two days, Wetzel delivered his trophy at Wheeling, and with untroubled conscience received the blood money. I looked for Lewis Wetzel's rock. I did not find it. The rock laying on the ground is the described Lewis Wetzel's rock, according to the cabin lady. Please help me find and discover Lewis Wetzel's rock. I need the Wetzel fan's help. I do not know if it actually exists. Join me on my channel as I head to Lloydsville and try to locate the farm where the supposed rock could be. Help me reunite history and explore the American frontier. As always, you can do this by share, liking, and subscribing, and hitting the thumbs up button to the videos that you enjoy. Take care, all.